Today I'm breaking down MF Doom's debut album, Operation Doomsday. Some of the samples in it. Doom's rhyming style and the story behind it. We'll see how Daniel Dumoulin reinvented himself as a character, the hip-hop supervillain, the tragedy behind the mask, and we'll decipher clues near the end of the album that hint that, trust me, true believer, this whole album may be an elaborate trick. Let's start from the very beginning. Before the supervillain, before Operation Doomsday, before any of that, we have two central figures for this story. Understanding this is the key to understanding MF Doom and Operation Doomsday. This is Daniel and Dingle Dumoulin. They were two brothers who were part of the hip hop trio KMD. They took the stage names Zev Love X and DJ Subrock respectively. Together with Onyx the Birthstone Kid, the trio KMD released their debut album, Mr. Hood, in 1991. This album sounds very very positive, very Native Tongues influenced. Brand Nubian is featured on one track. Something unique though is that this album contains a lot of samples from old children's shows like Sesame Street. There's a lot of humor throughout this album and there's even a reoccurring character, Mr. Hood, who they interact with. This album sold okay and did chart. It didn't do insane numbers, but it did well enough for a follow-up album. This album, Black Bastards, had a darker tone, a controversial album cover, and during the recording of this album, Onyx left the group. Then on April 23rd, 1993, Subrock was tragically struck by a car and killed. With one member quitting and his brother dying in a tragic accident, that left Zev Love X, aka Daniel Dumoulin, to finish the album alone. The album was completed, advanced copies were sent out, the release date was set for May 3rd, 1994, when KMD's label, Electro Records, abruptly canceled the album and dropped the group from their roster. That's a lot in a short period of time, and naturally, Daniel Dumoulin, aka Zev Love X, disappeared from the hip hop scene. He felt burned by the record label, hurt by Onyx leaving the group, and he's grieving the loss of his brother, Subrock. But then, a few years later, Dumoulin re-emerges on the scene, this time with a twist. He performed with his face covered, eventually settling on a now iconic metal mask. The positive Native Tongues-esque vibe is gone. Instead of interacting with a character on the album, Dumoulin himself inhabited a new character, MF Doom, the hip hop supervillain here to destroy rap. If this feels like a comic book origin story, that's exactly the point. MF Doom is inspired by the Marvel Comics villain, Dr. Doom. The debut album, Operation Doomsday, was released in 1999, and it's essentially a heightened comic book reaction of what Doom Lay had been going through. But by taking on a new character, the supervillain, he's able to mix fantasy with reality, blending the two scenes. Right at the start of the album, we get an intro skit titled The Time We Faced Doom. This is introducing the character of MF Doom. It contains a sample from the 1983 movie Wild Style, which is seen as the first hip hop movie. In the scene sample, the graffiti artist discusses an upcoming interview and whether he should reveal his face. Well, KMD was originally a graffiti crew, and now Doom is wearing a metal mask to cover his face. The Doom mask, by the way, on the original album cover from 1999, is closer to the Dr. Doom mask. Dumoulin's mask in real life is based on the mask from the movie Gladiator, which came out in 2000. But also in 1998, there was the movie The Man in the Iron Mask, the golden age of metal masks, you might say. There's a robotic voice talking over this wild style sample, which is making a nod to the 1991 novel, The Doomsday Conspiracy and the messages pertaining to Operation Doomsday. The robot voice also references Metal Face Doom, which is one of the things MF stands for. This intro also contains samples from the Fantastic Four TV series from 1967. As we talked about with KMD, Dumoulin was no stranger to sampling TV shows, but this gets much more specific. The character of Doom is introduced, and he says he's plotted his revenge and to say farewell to your friends. Then we get into the first song. Doomsday. This song samples Kiss of Life by Sade. It's an instrumental part of the song that's been looped and then Pebbles the Invisible Girl sings the hook from the song, changing the words from The Whole World Could Feel My Heartbeat to The Whole World Could Feel You MC. The drums, bass, and scratches come from the Boogie Down Productions song Poetry. Production-wise, this album has a lot of samples that, I mean, they're not dark and gloomy sounding, but they're also not as positive and happy sounding as KMD's first album. Something that has changed dramatically, though, Doom's writing. 
Stop, stick around, come through and dig the sound on the fly brown 606 cycle. Who throws around? Stick around, dig the sound, fly brown, dig around. Not to mention the tongue twisting internal rhymes of 606 psycho. The rest of the first verse has similarly dense rhymes, with Doom saying how much better he is at rhyming than you, alluding to betrayal by a friend, and then we land on the hook. On Tuesday, ever since the womb till I'm back with my brother went, that's what my tumor say. Right above my government, Doom will say, either unmarked or engraved, hey, who's to say? Doomsday, womb, tomb will say, Doom will say, who's to say? Also, my brother went, my government. The rhyming is so rich here. It takes multiple times listening to it, unpacking everything here to really understand what he's saying. And sometimes the references are so obscure, you have to look stuff up. It's incredible. This opening song introduces us to the character of MF Doom, the supervillain, a larger than life comic book character who's mixing fantasy with reality. His rhymes and references are unreal, and while this album goes a lot of places, we get hints like in the hook of this song that this is based around Dumoulin's real life experiences. I have so much more to cover with this album, so we gotta keep going, but let's look at the last line of the last verse. It's a word, no name, MF, the super villain. This is a play on it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Doom's ability to weave words together is absolutely insane. It's so complex, yet his delivery is so effortless. It's like he sells rhymes like dimes. Set up. All right, so the next track is Rhymes Like Dimes. The sample here is from 100 Ways by Quincy Jones from 1980. I love the groove of this song, not only because it feels great. I mean, it's Quincy Jones, Lewis Johnson, Greg Fillingaines, John Robinson, Jerry Hay, basically Michael Jackson's studio band, but also because this isn't a typical hip hop beat. By the way, get your own slip mat, diggingthegrids.com. Lyrically, I mean, in the first song, he said he was here to destroy rap, and in this song, he does exactly that. He compares his ability to rhyme well to selling drugs. And it's not just the rhythm of his flow that's incredible. It's not just the dense references that require multiple listens to fully understand what all's happening. It's the way the words sound together. Like, we're gonna look at a verse from this song in just a second, but my analogy for this is like, as a DJ, if I'm transitioning from one song to another, I've gotta match the tempos, right? I want it to flow from one song to the other as easily as possible, but if I've got the tempos and the keys matched between these two songs, it's absolutely perfect. It'll flow seamlessly. You might not be able to tell where one song ends and the next begins. That same idea is at play with Doom's rhyming. He's got clever ways to say what he wants to say, and he's saying it in time to the beat. But the way the words connect to each other, the repeating rhyme schemes, it's like a celebration of the English language. Now, I'm gonna isolate his vocal and slow it down 15 beats per minute, just so we can catch what he's saying and how incredible the rhyming is here. But don't try to unpack what he's saying, just listen for how how the words flow together. I sell rhymes like dimes, the one who mostly keep cash and brag about the broker times. Better rhymes make for better songs, it matters not if you got a lot of what it takes just to get along. Surrender now, so for serious setbacks, got get back, connects, web get stacks. Even if you got to get jet black, head to toe, to get the dough, battle for bottles of mo or joe. This fly flow take practice like Tavo with Billy Blanks, or you're too kind, really thanks. Head to toe, get the dough, battle for bottles of mo and dro. All these three syllable rhymes, and then he switches to two to fly flow, tie bow with Billy Blanks, really thanks. This is incredible. Let's keep moving. To the corner lost forever like oh my darling Clementine. He hold his heart when he telling rhyme. Clementine telling rhyme, another three syllable rhyme. When is his time? I hope his soul go to heaven. He nasty like the old time, old number seven. You still taste it when you chase it with the Coca-Cola. Make him wish they could erase it out the Motorola. Pause. That's a nine syllable rhyme. You chase it with the Coca-Cola and erase it out the Motorola. I told her, no credit for a bag. If you want what they got, then go get it. It's all gag. Only in America could you find a way to earn a healthy buck and still keep your attitude on self destruct. Keep in mind, this is actually 15 beats per minute faster, and we're not unpacking the references here. Even if the references meant nothing, which they don't, but even if they did, the way these words flow together is incredible. 
Again, it's like a DJ mixing the tempo and the key of two songs together. They weave in and out so perfectly. It's mind boggling. On the song The Finest, it features a back and forth with Tommy Gun. No, not the kid from Rocky Five, but another rapper also known as Megalon. The thing is, the MF Doom world is gigantic. I don't have time to get into all of it in this video, but this song sees the introduction of yet another character, Sci-Fly. This character is only mentioned once, but in the next song, Go With The Flow, Sci-Fly shows up in the first half of the second verse. And actually, the original release of this single was credited as MF Doom featuring Sci-Fly, but this was changed for the album release. This idea of rapping as a character is interesting. I mean, rapping is generally very personal. You're writing your own rhymes about your own life, and it's generally looked down upon to have something like a ghostwriter. There is absolutely exaggeration or metaphor, but it's mostly based in reality. But here's Daniel Dumoulé rapping as MF Doom, a character he invented, and mid-song he switches to another character named Sci-Fly. And while MF Doom is the most well-known character in the Doom universe, it's not the only one. Dumoulin's next two solo albums would be as completely different characters. King Ghidra, the three-headed dragon from Godzilla, and Victor Vaughn, a teenager in the same universe as MF Doom. These are all distinct characters, and since it's going further into the fantasy end and away from reality, Dumoulin can continue to write insane rhymes and take it anywhere. It doesn't need to be grounded in our reality. The song Tick Tick sees another definition of MF. Instead of Metal Face Doom, he's Metal Fingers Doom. Dumoulin handles the production while MF Grimm raps. Grimm is a real person, not just another Dumoulin character. But this beat is absolutely insane, namely because it's constantly slowing down and speeding up. The sample is from Glass Onion by The Beatles off the White Album. Check us out. MF Grimm raps while the metal-fingered villain warps the beat back and forth. On Red and Gold, the sample is from the song Shoot 'em Up Movies by the group The Deal from 1987. All right, so here's the original record. Speed that up. Remember when last past November when the clown king got pounded in with the Timberland? I love the samples on this album because they're so different from so much other hip-hop. There's no James Brown here, no incredible bongo band, no jazz. It's a lot of R&B. There's that Beatles song, we got a Steely Dan sample coming up. It just sounds a lot different than most hip-hop. It's also not very polished. This is intentional. Dumoulin wants it to sound raw and intentionally leaves the production straightforward. A loop with added drums on top. That leaves room for his rhymes to shine. But even then, his vocal Vocals aren't recorded on an expensive mic. DJ Stretcher Armstrong recalled the recording process of this album. Doom recorded most of that over a three week period in my apartment on my MPC using my records. He never slept for more than three to four hours at a time. The funny thing is, none of it was planned. He never asked if he could crash and make music. But my place was mine and that back then I had a studio and practically an open door for music friends. He came over and just started getting busy and stayed getting busy. We'd play different versions of songs that would eventually become the album, but at this time it really just seemed like he was creating music because he had to, not looking at a release date or goal down the line. The song Hey samples the Scooby-Doo theme, which sounds crazy, but it works. This song also references the term true believers. This is what the legendary Marvel Comics writer Stan Lee called his fans. Stan Lee, by the way, is the creator of the Doctor Doom character that MF Doom is based on. We're gonna unpack that more at the end of this album and video, but let's keep moving. Gas Draws, another incredible song off this album. The primary sample here is from Black Cow by Steely Dan. This is a legendary album and song. Got the record slowed down, let's see if I can drop it. By the way, I real on bad dreams, back up screams in the 50s, fear for mad schemes that heat shot like Jiffy. Pop, pop, in an instant, get smoke. <laughs> 
Gas Draws appears to be a sort of nod to the song The Gas Face by Third Bass, which was Zev Love X's first appearance on a record. This is from 1989, before the release of KMD's first album. And actually, a demo of this song appeared on the Stretch Armstrong radio show in late 1994. Check us out. Here's the original demo from 1994. And the final 1999 version. You can hear the difference here in his flows. As Zev Love X, it's much more upbeat, but as MF Doom, it's deep rougher and more, I don't know, jaded sounding? We're seeing the transformation between Zev Love X and MF Doom. In fact, in this song, he refers to himself as the supervillain, references the Fantastic Four, and Doom with the metal face, all in the 1994 version. It would appear as though Doom is playing with time, not in the tempo sense like he did on Tick Tick, but in the historic sense, throwing back to his beginnings with KMD. But if MF Doom didn't emerge till 1997 and then with his debut album in 99, what do we do with his 1994 demo reference to all the Doom stuff? Let's keep going. On the song titled Question Mark, this is all about Doomlay's brother Subrock and the formation of the Doom character. It opens with another Fantastic Four sample referencing the creation of the Doom Mask. Then it's Doomlay reminiscing about his brother Subrock. Like my twin brother, we did everything together from hundred ricots and lots to cop and brother lovers. Remember when you went and got the dark blue ballies? I had all the different color kazals and kazalis. The sub rock, you feel the ring with the ruby and the whole eye. Truly the endless dynamic duo on the whole block. I keep a flick of you with the machete sword in the hand. Everything is going according to plan, man. This album, all these rhymes, the entire character of MF Doom, it seems, is at its core a man grieving the loss of his brother. He's lost one of his closest relationships and been burned by the music industry, and in response, he's made this comic book rap supervillain art album. DJ Stretch Armstrong said he was creating music like he had to, not for a specific release date, but because he had to. He had to get this out for his brother, for himself. Just look at the back cover of the album. This is the picture we started with. These are the Doomalay brothers, just with Daniel's eyes covered up because he's doomed now. But at the end of the verse, he says, everything is going according to plan. But what's the plan? Because just after the verse, we get another Fantastic Four sample where Doom seeks his final revenge, but is attacked and possibly defeated. It finishes by saying, I guess we won't see him again till Doomsday. Oh, you mean Doomsday. Ever since the womb till he's back where his brother went, that's what his tomb will say right above his government Doomalay? Either unmarked or engraved, hey, who's to say? Come on. The final track on the original record is Hero vs. Villain, parentheses epilogue, which features E. Mason questioning the spectrum of good and evil and where MF Doom lies within that. Then we cut back to the sample of Wildstyle, the same movie that we started with in the intro, but this time the main character is deciding not to go through with the interview. He's not going to reveal his identity, and then it cuts to a sample of a voice saying, Right? Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Do yourself. Trust me. This is sampled from the 1995 movie Mallrats. In this specific scene, a heartbroken guy who's obsessed with comics runs into Stan Lee in the mall. Stan tells him a story of his own, about a girl he loved who he didn't end up with. Let me just play the clip. You'll hear the sampled parts, but the context here is crucial. What'd you do? I went on with my life. I created some special new superheroes. Uh, they were characters that reflected my own heartbreak and my own regrets. How so? Dr. Doom wears body armor to conceal his own mangled form, right? Yeah. Okay. That was me beneath the armor. The Hulk. A normal guy one minute, a rage of emotions the next. Just like me when I thought about what I'd given up. So you created each character as a way to deal with your one big regret. Yeah, the girl that got away. Look, do yourself a favor, Brody. Don't wait, because all the money, all the women, 
Even all the comic books in the world, they can't substitute for that one person. I don't know all the comics in the world. Trust me, true believer. Well, good talking to you. Keep up all the good work. You keep reading them. I'll keep writing them. True believer, do yourself a favor. Do yourself, be yourself. Trust me. Come on, this was Doomalay beneath the armor the entire time. Operation Doomsday is an art piece. It's a man grieving the loss of his brother by inventing a comic book supervillain who's come to destroy rap, and he has the rhymes to back it up. All throughout this album, Doomalay mixes reality with fantasy, stuff from his own life, comic book references, additional characters, and more. But what about that 1994 demo of Gas Draws? Why was Doomalay rapping as MF Doom, or a primitive form of Doom, all the way back in 1994? Something feels off. Let's play the rest of that scene from Mall Rats and see if we can find anything. Stan. Hi. Hey, you know, I think he bought it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What kind of story did you give him? Oh, it was the vulture soliloquy, you know, from the Spider-Man anniversary issue. Love, be a vulture tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Oh, forget it. It seems Stan Lee wasn't being entirely honest. He was quoting comic books to help this kid through a tough time, but he wasn't being entirely truthful. Okay, now check out this clip of Doom being interviewed for the Red Bull Music Academy. Yeah, see, right after we finished the album Black Bastards, even while we was working on Black Bastards, me and Sub were both gonna do solo records respectively. So I was gonna do the Doom thing since back then. And he was gonna come out with his, his joint as another character, you know? And uh, really, I just continued on with the ideas I had in my head, and I developed the Doom character and developed the songs and more of the concept around the character. And uh, until it, it just culminated to enough that when Bob heard it, he got it, you know what I mean? And you know, the style was different. I came with a different lyrical style, a different, I try to really make it distinctly different from the Zevil of X character. Like how you would have the characters in the book, like, you know, that different, you know, a uh, different strategy, you know. Daniel Dumoulin, the man, just said that not only was he planning on doing the MF Doom character when his brother was still alive, but that Zev Love X, his original stage name, was just another character? Have I gotten all of this wrong? What was true and what was fiction? Has this whole thing been one elaborate trick? Wait, this is exactly the kind of thing a supervillain would do. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, click the like button down there. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. MF Doom has been called your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. And one other MC who loves MF Doom is Yasin Bey, formerly known as Most Deaf. He's an incredible lyricist in his own right. And on his song, Mathematics, he teamed up with DJ Premier, who produced the track and made the music match the lyrics perfectly. But for that story, you gotta watch this video.